Good afternoon, brothers and sisters, or good evening, brothers and sisters. I'm in my bathroom because it's more solitude and more quiet where I'm going to bring forth my son. He's only 11, and he's going to tell you about, about a very prophetic dream he had. Now, this is something that I need you guys to seek Jesus Christ on if, it is of, if this dream is of God. You have to test every spirit, okay? And then I'm going to interpret the dream in front of you, in front of my son as well, okay? It was, uh, well, to begin with, after I fell asleep, I had a dream about, I was in a desert, and there was these complex structures of pyramids, small pyramids, probably about three meters tall, and somewhere between the whole complex was actually long probably about 15 or 16 meters long the whole complex with all the pyramids connected at the base and they had these little it was like looking like made of iron the pyramids and it was, uh, had blinds that were made out of encoded with gold small line of gold. So it was strange. I went in. That's where I opened a small corridor. It's a ladder. I crawled down the ladder. And the door shut behind me. I wonder where I was. So I ran up a few steps and stairs. And it was a little platform. The guardrail right there. So I went here. Opened the door and there was a Another corridor, large uh, aisleway, and it was like uh, gold and iron, and it was uh, idols in there, like Egyptian gods. And that's what the pyramids, the pyramids come from Egypt, and they worship pagans. That they are pagans. They worship pagan gods. So as I was going here. I went in, going down, I kept going down, and as I was going down to the pyramids, there was a tomb. I opened the door to this tomb, and I saw the tomb, and that's all I remember. What about the second dream right after that? It was one of those larger pyramids, like the ones at Cairo. Except it was like in a fortress. So I went up to the Pharaoh's uh, chamber. And there was skulls. A line of like sacrifices. Skulls. And that was it. That dream. Alright. Um, ladies and gentlemen. It reminds me of the book of Genesis. Um, the counterfeit tower or the counterfeit temple. I believe the the, the tower, the, t the pyramids that remind me of Babel, the counterfeit of, uh, you know, the, the counterfeit tower of the Lord's righteous tower. Okay, I believe that this pyramid represents the one world order. If you look at the book of Genesis, Ham Nimrod, because I was looking at the scripture today, I believe it's in chapter 11 in the book of Genesis. Nimrod was a mighty hunter and at one time he was he was favored you know not favored his the Lord's spirit rested upon him until Nimrod okay turned his heart from God to false gods he turned his heart from Jesus Christ who is the true God to false gods and he became succumb with pride he believed he was a mighty hunter he wanted the glory of man. He wanted to be worshipped like God, Nimrod. You know, kind of like what Lucifer tried to pull. And Nimrod wanted to establish rulership globally, like a one world order. So I believe that these pyramids represent that. That's one part. The other part is, we all know that the third temple is prophesied to be built in Israel. I believe in uh, Jerusalem, the Holy Mount. 
the, the, the holy the mount holy mount of the mount of olives I believe around that area there it's supposed to be built so I believe that this pyramid is counterfeit temple to the holy pyramid of the most high God, I mean, unto the holy temple, I'm sorry, Father God, to the holy temple of the most high God, Jesus Christ, the third temple that's supposed to be built. With that being said, we all know that when the temple in Israel was built, the Antichrist is going to come forth and declare himself a God, thus basically ushering the new world order, okay? That's one representation or two representations I have of that pyramid. The tomb in the pyramid represents a type of resurrection. Now we know, and I've told you this, that the enemy counterfeits everything God does. Everything. Even his resurrection. So Jesus Christ was underground for three days. And Jesus Christ had a tomb and he was resurrected and glorified. Amen. Now, the tomb in this particular dream, I believe, is counterfeit to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The tomb represents that there will be a resurrection, a counterfeit glorification. There will be a resurrection of the Antichrist. That's what the dream is prophesying. Now, my son and my kid's dad had identical dreams. In the dream... This is a dream that they had about a year ago. They saw a pyramid in the Middle East, and they saw Obama going into the pyramid with a dark figure, except the dark figure, we could not tell who it was. Dark figure looked like a man, okay? So it went into a pyramid, an ungodly pyramid, okay? I have reason to believe, all right, that that dream was telling us that the Antichrist entering its temple means that the Antichrist is going to soon inhabit its vessel and rise. Because the Antichrist, we all know, is Satan. Satan inhabiting its vessel, a chosen vessel for Satan don't know who that is so I believe that these dreams are piecing together that the Antichrist is coming the Antichrist is among us we don't know who it is but the Antichrist is among us and I believe that Obama's one of the dark kings spoken of in the scriptures maybe one of the ten kings I don't know but I believe he plays a pivotal role in biblical prophecy, that he is one of the dark kings, the puppet of the Antichrist. And he's going to play a role in the New World Order. With that being said, I had a dream last night that I was standing in the Middle East, and I know it had to be Israel. I was watching, okay, as a temple was being constructed. There was many workers there. It, it wasn't the old times. It was here in this generation. It was the temple being constructed. And I was watching at how far they got in the temple. They got pretty far. What the Lord told me is that this construction of the third temple is underway. How far, I don't know. But they're not telling you that. Just like when I also told you that I had a dream that Obama um, Obama did away with the U.S. Constitution and he suspended presidential elections. I told you guys that. Now, the Lord showed me something. And again, I seen it in non-mainstream media. And they're not talking about this. That Obama signed an executive order suspending, delaying the 26, I'm sorry, the 2016 presidential elections until further notice. That's what he wants to do. He does not want to leave office. So that's why when I told you he's going to be the last president you see, he is. 
because he's ultimately trying to be a dictator, which is not a president anymore. I believe he's being used by Jesus Christ to render judgment on the United States. And once his purpose is served, okay, um, I don't know what's going to happen after that, but I believe that everything has a season. All right? With that being said, take this to Jesus in prayer. This is very disturbing news. But at the same time, you know, it brings us a step closer to the arrival of Jesus Christ. This is telling you that the Antichrist is rising. And I'm not going to sit here and say it's Obama because I don't believe it's Obama. I don't believe the Antichrist is Obama. That's what a bunch of false prophets are preaching on YouTube, but I don't believe it's Obama. I believe Obama is one of the dark kings spoken, spoken of in scriptures. He could possibly be very well one of the Ten Kings. He's going to play a role in the end time. He's going to play a role in Bible prophecy. But I do not believe he's the Antichrist. So I was bringing you this dream forth. I mean, my son couldn't understand what the dream meant. He went to bed just like any normal 11-year-old kid would do. He did not go to bed thinking about pyramids or Egyptian artifacts. He didn't go to bed and looked at he didn't look at any kind of documentaries i don't let my kids watch tv you can call it what you will you want to watch that your kids watch that filth that's your business i'm not letting that worldly stuff near my son that's just how i feel it's displeasing to jesus christ so with that being said he did not go to bed thinking about this type of stuff he doesn't even have an interest in egyptian history the false gods that they worship that's another thing I wanted to touch on. The false gods he said that he saw, he said he saw a different, um, different artifacts or different false Egyptian gods. That represents idol, um, idolatry. It represents demons, obviously. Excuse me. Um, I believe that it also represents evidence of the of these pyramids having demonic relation in other words false gods these false egyptian gods we know are demons okay that pyramid represented the temple of the antichrist in that pyramid of the antichrist obviously many demonic entities will dwell there because it is a place that is unholy and unclean the skulls and also I believe it represents about the coming about of the spiritual realms breaking down completely as well the skulls represent many many deaths it will be casualties because you know that the Antichrist will break the covenant with Israel in the middle of the tribulation and will wage war against the saints so there is going to be many deaths to be due to the great war, I know that's going to play a role, and there's going to be many catastrophes to cause those high numbers of the, of, of the casualties of deaths, you know, the death casualties. I also believe it represents, sorry guys, it also represents, I've told you guys before about how the Lord has his end time army, and it's in scriptures. And Satan has his. I believe that those skulls also represent the satanic army you heard so much about. Satanic soldiers. They are dead man's bones. Dead man's bones is souls that are hell bound. Those skulls also represent not just dead man's bones, not just, like I said, the satanic army, not just the many deaths that will come about. They also represent the amount of souls that will be condemned to hell because for every one person that goes to heaven, a thousand go to hell. We all know that demonic possession is going to increase at a rapid rate. Those skulls also represent that. Sacrifices. 
counterfeit sacrifices when people give themselves into demonic entities. When they lay themselves on the altar as an offering to Satan. Counterfeit offering. Now, I am here to tell you that these are the last days. You might not want to hear this. You might get tired of hearing it. You might call people that tell you this fear mongers, but it's not meant to instill fear in you. It's meant to prepare you for what is to come because it, what is on the horizon is not good at all. Okay? I'm telling you guys, you people, to get right with God while there's still time because there's not much time left. And I already told you that the Lord said he's coming whether you are ready or not because you were given ample time. Because if God was waiting for you, if God was waiting for you to get ready, wouldn't God give you a time and tell you, you people, listen, I know you're not ready. But I will be coming in so-and-so days, so get ready. If God was waiting for you to get ready, wouldn't he give you time for one? Two, wouldn't he give you an anticipated date that he'll be coming? Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. If someone tells you that God is saying that he's given, he's given mankind time, and he's not going to come until they're ready, that doesn't align up with the word of God because the word of God says that when Jesus Christ comes, no man knows the day or the hour. That means that the Father's coming whether you're ready or not. So you don't want to you don't want to miss that opportunity. Be the ones left out in the dark with gnashing of teeth. You don't want that. I was also shown other revelations about the scriptures that I cannot reveal to you unless the Father gives me to say so. Scriptures that are unlocked that not even theo theologians or scholars know about. And I can't tell you until the Father says it's okay. This is information you're not ready to know. This information the Father said he felt I should know, but there's other revelations he hasn't told me. Now, if it's the Father's will to tell me, then I'll, then I'll find, I'll find out, you know. But with the information that I gave you, take it to Jesus in prayer. Do not attack an 11-year-old kid. Or me, for that matter. He has a lot of prophetic dreams and visions that he does not understand what they mean. He can interpret it somewhat, but he doesn't really know what he's seeing. Because he's still an innocent child. So, I have to interpret it for him. He's getting interpretations and wisdom little by little. But I have to still interpret for him what the dreams mean, right? Mm -hmm. They can't hear you, sweetheart. See, yes. Okay, so, uh, you know, go to Jesus. I will let my son close this and basically reiterate about testing the spirits. We have like two minutes, sweetheart, based on the camera. Testing the spirits. One way to test the spirits is by checking their fruits. How is their ministry? Checking, testing the spirits, when you are looking at someone's fruits, you want to see their fruits good, right? Because a good tree cannot produce bad fruit and a bad tree cannot produce good fruit. Uh -huh. And we have to test the spirits, as it says in First John, to make sure if that person is of God. In Deuteronomy, I believe, 18.22 or... 1821 says that if and 1821 and 22 how do we test the, the prophet if a prophesy come comes if a prophet prophesy falsely one time and it doesn't come to pass then that prophet was never sent by God don't be afraid to speak against him and then it says in, the, in, the, in Jeremiah to look up the scripture that if the prediction if 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 a prophet comes and promises you peace and a prediction comes true then that is a prophet that the Lord has sent. That is a prophet that the Lord has spoken to. We must test the spirits, ladies and gentlemen. There's a bunch of false prophets out there. you got to be very careful. Test our spirits. Ask God about this. Don't be afraid. We are in the last days, ladies and gentlemen. And the spiritual realms are continuing to break down. 
I am swamped with deliverance cases, people telling me about stuff happening in their homes as far as Alabama. So stay strong, stay grounded, and um, I'll make a video as soon as I can. I'll keep you updated with what's going on as much as possible. Amigos.